All right, so going beyond the basics with CSS grids. Uh, in the first video I did on CSS grids, I was showing how you could set up the different columns and rows uh, just using the basic commands for template rows, template columns. Here I want to use named areas. So a different way of defining what the columns and rows are in your grid, which really makes it simple. So I have here a page with the main element inside of there. I've got four paragraphs just to have four pieces of content. I'm def I've given them each a class so I can target them in my CSS. Nothing to do with the grids. These are just names so that I can, like this, target them in my CSS. For each one of them, I'm providing a name. Now, I've just used ABCD, but you can use anything you want. I could call it intro, sidebar, main, and foot, or footer, or anything you want. I just did this to tie in with the spans that I'm using to label them. Now, inside my main element right here, which I'm using to wrap around all the paragraphs, I'm going to set my display grid. There we are. Now, these are all overlapping right now because I haven't defined how I want to make these things appear. So I will set my grid template area like this. Now, because CSS works in a way that you can have as much white space as you want and then the semicolon indicates the end, it makes it easy for us to come in here and write out a grid using these letters or whatever these labels are in any way we want. For each row, we're going to have a set of quotation marks. So if I wanted two rows, I'd do this. If I wanted three, I'd have a third. And then inside of here, I'm going to write out these letters however I want this laid out. So let's start just simply with two. And we'll say A, B, and then C, D, like that. There we are. There's my A, B, C, D, just as we've defined here. Now let's turn this into three rows. And I'm going to make the D portion fill up the whole row at the bottom, so two columns. This is A, C, and then B can be this whole column right here. So we can, as long as whatever you're defining here creates a rectangle or a square, a four-sided figure, you can't have some unusual L shape or something like that. It has to be a square or a rectangle. As long as you do that with your letters, you're absolutely fine. If you wanted to have something that was left blank, you could put a period in here like this. So now there's an empty space right here. So labels or periods, those are your options. Now, let's say I do this, but I wanted to have the A and C take up much more of the space, or maybe I want A to be the whole thing. And then we're going to do um, B, C, like this. And I want to break this column up so that B takes up more space than C. Well, we use the same thing that we did before. So grid template columns. There it is. And we just define what's the ratio that we want to use. Well, I'm going to use for the first one, two fractions, and then one for the second. So let's do two FR, one FR. There we are. Now, B is taking up two thirds. C is taking up one third. Just the same way we were doing before with the original CSS grids. Just now we're using these letters to define the areas. And I keep saying letters, but think of them as labels. The labels can be anything that you want. Call them names that have some meaning to you. That way it's easier to define what these are and understand at a glance what these different columns are. You don't have to use individual single letters. And uh, one other thing you might want to add in here is just the grid gap. Now you can set row gap, column gap, or grid gap. We'll set both at the same time. So let's put two REMs in between each of them. So we've got nice big space all the way around. All right, and that's CSS grids with named grid areas. Very useful feature. Hope it helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you found it useful, please share. And as always, thanks for watching.